from beautiful North Hollywood, California. It's Flashback Tonight, starring Delia. Welcome to Flashback Tonight, 2020 COVID edition. We've been forced to ditch our in-studio live audience in favor of one-on-one -on -one interviews with some of our favorite celebrities from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. And today, our guest is one of the premier a cappella groups or harmony groups, kings of harmonies, if some may call them, of the 90s, Grammy nominated as yet. What's up, fellas? I'll bring you right in. Yeah. How, you doing? How you doing? All right. Good, 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 man. You guys looking good, man. How's the 2020 COVID edition been treating you guys? <laughs> Not good. <laughs> Has everything been canceled or you, you still got some gigs somewhere in the line? Cancellation after cancellation. I, I, think, I think you know every day canceled. <laughs> it, isn't that crazy? Just like you start out the beginning of the year with a lot of dates and just like a Thanos snap, just bye, mm -hmm. just yeah. gone. <laughs> but yeah. you guys, um, so let, let offer the, can, say it again. We're still blessed to be alive and kicking. We're still blessed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So just to introduce the audience who we have here. We have uh, Kenny and Dion and Paris and Claude from As Yet. You guys have been known as the kings of harmony and appropriately so, I might say, because some of your harmonies I don't even want to try because they're too close together and I know I'm going to mess them up. How do you guys do these harmonies so tight? Who arranged the harmonies, first of all? Well, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we all have arranging skills, but yeah, but Claude's been arranging since 91. <laughs> since 1991, huh? Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, so there's a there's a lot to go over. I, I want to go over for myself as being a fan of As Yet and knowing you guys' your history and the hit songs and everything you've gone through. So I'm, I'm kind of want to bring this interview from uh, beginning to the, to the end, okay? Not to the end, but to where we are right now. Um, yeah. So As Yet As We Know It was... Uh, from uh, Philadelphia, was it? You guys were discovered in yeah. Philly? Yes. Philadelphia, discovered by Babyface, one of the biggest producers in the game, brings you out to LA. You guys record a record. You get a song like Last Night as your first single. Who does that? Who who get who gets a song like Last Night? And a, was it arranged by Mervyn Warren, that one? Yeah, we, uh, us and Mervyn Warren arranged it together. Okay, so you get the hit song. Was anybody a little scared about doing such a suggestive song for your first thing out when the image seemed to be a little cleaner than the lyrics of the song? No, <laughs> no, no, it was all systems go. <laughs> he said, all systems go. What was, who played it for you first? Babyface actually took us to his house, set us down, uh -huh. and played a long list of songs that he, you know, he thought would be good for the album and the very first one. Mm -hmm. but for us was last night. Yep. And, and how was that? We, heard it, we knew it was a hit. I mean, you know, when Russell Simmons heard it, he had to have it for the Nutty Professor soundtrack. Uh huh. And it spiral from there. Yeah. Absolutely. How was that working with Babyface? I mean, you guys, newbies in the game, and you work with the biggest producer on the planet. What were you guys thinking when Babyface said he wanted to work with you guys? We hit the jackpot. <laughs> 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 and, and how did you hit that jackpot? How does one get to Babyface from Philadelphia? Wow. I mean, <laughs> that was such a long track meet. I mean, you know, we pretty much, you know, hunted LaFace Records down. You know, we knew we wanted to be on LaFace Records since Dame and Dame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dame, yeah, Dame and Dame. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, like, you know, it's crazy because... You know, me and Mike Bass McCary, we from the same neighborhood. So okay. when they started working with Babyface after they, you know, came out and everything, it was like, damn, like, you know, that's that's supposed to be us. Right. So <laughs> it, it happened anyway. So it was like a, a blessing. So yeah. I mean, it's a there's a lot of story to that, but you know, that's that's the short story. So. Yeah, and you said you were with, with Mike from a uh, um, Boys to Men, two great groups coming out of Philadelphia. Did you guys you knew Mike growing up? Did you know they were Wanye and uh, Sean and uh, Nate at all? Uh, personally, um, Mike was from my neighborhood. I was from Nice Town. He was from Logan, and we lived like a uh, Roosevelt Boulevard, two blocks apart. Mm -hmm. But uh, I up until that part, I I've, I've never met Sean and Wanye and. and well, Wanye is actually from my other neighborhood over there, 
you know, in North Philly, but it's a long story too. But there's a lot of history <laughs> between us, the Adjet family and the Boysman family. Yeah. And, you know, just interwoven through all the years. Right, right. We're very good friends. I got my start from Boys to Men. <laughs> yeah. Tell me about that, Paris. How'd you well, get your start? When I got um, my first deal was through Boys to Men's label, which was Stone Creek um, through Sony. Mm-hmm. They find us. We uh, snuck in back, just l- kind of like what they did with Baby. With uh, was it, was it New Edition? We went to the oh, yeah. jazz festival in Cincinnati and sang for Wanye and Nate. And they Wanye started crying like, "We gotta have y'all." And they signed <laughs> us. We thought they was playing. Like two weeks later, we was living in Philadelphia. What? That's Wanye what? was crying. We made him cry. Me and my cousin. <laughs> He's like, "This is amazing." <laughs> And, and that says something because, you know, Wanye has got one of those voices that I want to cry every time I hear him sing. So I'm like, if he's crying over you guys, over you, that's uh... a. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. All right. So you're in the studio with Babyface. What's the process? What is he? How's this process of recording you guys? Well, um, we first uh, did the run of the backgrounds of like, what, like five oh, songs? songs yeah. yeah. Like, um, so we, we went in and we. Pretty much did what we do. We arranged the backgrounds yeah. with Mervyn Warren from Take Six, who, you know, they asked us if anyone we would want to work with. And of course, we mentioned, you know, anyone from Take Six, you know. So right. we got with Mervyn and uh, we arranged a lot of those songs with him on the album. And man, I mean, it was like clockwork. It was it, it was just really quick. Yeah, man, that's that's amazing. I- Babyface, he he said a few times that he pretty much signed us because we were a self-contained unit. So, you know, it was it was kind of like he just sat back and and until he was ready to, you know, do what he do with leads and stuff like that, he just pretty much sat back and let us and Mervin put it together. Man, I'm so jealous. I ain't gonna lie. Like I never, <laughs> I have never worked with Babyface, and that is a goal. I'm like, damn. I would love to work with him. What was that? I said he's still living, you know. He beat that COVID. Oh, are you right, right. I'm trying. I'm running from that COVID. You about that got it right. We just did a show. We opened for Babyface. Uh, actually, it's been a year ago now. This time last year, and uh, I was definitely trying to like drop hints of like, man, it'd be great for all for one to have a face song. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> be great for me. I don't know how great it'd be for you. You work with everybody, but for us too. Okay, so you work with Babyface, but that doesn't stop you from your debut album. Then you go on to another heavyweight, David Foster. Yeah. David Foster. How how is it that you ended up with David Foster and Babyface, and then how do you end up doing a duet with Peter Cetera? Well, that's <laughs> again they asked us. That's the simple uh, answer. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah, asked us. You know, hey, do, do you guys want to do a cappella? We was like, heck yeah. So, <laughs> you know, we got together and we figured that, you know, it was going to be a song from Chicago. So we arranged it, put it together, submitted it. He loved it. Peter Cetera heard it. David Foster heard it. They wanted to, uh, David Foster and Peter Cetera, they actually played and the chords of our acapella. So, and that's how that became. And that's how we actually did the show with you guys and all of us ending up on a stage with Celine Dion and Terrell uh, oh, yeah. and yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it was some sort of it was some sort of 70s theme thing, wasn't it? Yeah. What was that? It was the David Foster and Friends show with as yet all for one, Celine Dion. Yeah. And- uh, uh, after seven yeah. and yeah. Just a bunch the, of the theme, I think the theme that night was like some sort of seventies theme. I just remember wearing a bunch of old seventies clothes for that or something. <laughs> yeah, it was pretty. It was, it was it was some time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had a, a huge hit, and that's an, that's my second time being jealous of uh of as yet because I can tell you this: I was in a, a band doing promo with All for One when Hard to Say I'm Sorry came on the radio. And I heard it and I was like, damn it. I was like, 
I wanted to do that song. I actually had said that to uh, a couple people before. I was like, I grew up listening to this song when I was living in Canada. I love it. It makes me cry. When I heard your harmony, I, I don't know if we could have done it the same justice that you guys did it. But when I heard that harmony come across, I was like, damn, I wanted to do that song. That is such an amazing song. Is that the one you guys got nominated for a Grammy for? Yes. Yes. Yep. yes. Lost yeah. No Diggity, another great song. You, which who did you lose to? No Diggity. Black oh, yeah. Diggity. Yeah. A great yeah, yeah. Song. Oh, why did that song have to come? Around the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's usually all the songs when you lose, that's what you say. It's like, why did that song have to do that? So from there, you know, David uh Peter Cetera came back to us and he was like, Hey guys, I really love what you did with Hard to Say, I'm sorry. Can you please back me up on your mm -hmm. inspiration? And thus the you know, mm -hmm. the video that we did with us and him and the you know, when you hear it today, you you mostly hear it in the supermarkets and stuff like that. But yeah. That was that was a pretty good one, you know. We we had a lot of fun doing that one. Man, y'all got the big heavyweights begging to be um, work to work with you. That's that says a lot. It says absolutely a lot. Um, so this this current um, formation of as yet um, with uh, Dion and Paris and uh, Claude and uh, Kenny Dyshawn or no Dyshawn? He's just not here today, or I'm not sure. <laughs> there we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this, this current iteration of 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 as yet is I was gonna say is more close along the lines to the original or because uh, Claude you were part of the original right when you yeah. first moved out to L.A. Yes. Yeah. So you you move out to L.A. with the dreams of making a, a big record and all that, but before that first record comes out, you left the group. Has, has enough time gone by where you feel comfortable saying what was that made you walk away from your dream or? Yeah. Um. It was it was family issues. Uh -huh. um, I was married at the time. My wife was pregnant and she was real sickly. Oh. And, um, basically, I took with her, moved to Georgia with my mom and my family. We prayed her through it. You know, she got she got over it. And then I had to spend a, a life of trying to make it happen as a as a family man and a yeah basic worker. So you know, I just you know, but so I was to coming back, you know, they was like, well, why don't you just come back to the group? I was like, you know, this is like after so long. Oh yeah. Yeah. Know. And you, and you got the range for the, for the part. Cause I've been uh, Googling and listening to uh, you guys singing. You got that, uh, that high tenor, you got the high tenor working for you. Yeah. yeah serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's in the alto range. Yeah. Yeah. It was up there. I was like, okay, I'm not singing his parts. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Me <laughs> so, all right. So, you're on, you're on the um the cusp of big hits. Uh, you've got the gra Grammy nominated thing, and then the the group starts to you know sort of come down a little bit. Mark leaves, and then um uh Sean leaves, and ah other person. Um Sean, Mark, and who was the other one? Daryl. Daryl leaves. So, what was it that uh, caused? the breakup of the group or the to tear apart during a time where you're having so much big success or was that the problem was was success also okay, okay so in a nutshell <clears throat> you know just in the span from moving from philadelphia to los angeles there was a lot of changes going on you know i mean we were young guys so when, mm -hmm. when you hear of claude you know for personal reasons going his own way at the time and everything, you know, we would, we would bring cats in that, you know, weren't with us for a month, you know, as in, as in Daryl's case, you know, he wasn't even with us for a month before we shipped out to Los Angeles. And um, Mark, you know, Mark was always a good friend from back home. And then we decided to put Mark in the group and the rest was history. So those two additions weren't really original members of our group. Got it. Okay, that's understood. Let's move on from that then. We won't even worry about the, the, the iteration. If I may say, the nucleus of what we have has always been what we have going on right here. That's why our harmonies can never change. And that's why what we do is a structure of what we built because 
it is exactly the nucleus of who we are and what we do from absolutely. the beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You can still hear the harmony. It's like, even though there's um, new members, it's like the harmony doesn't seem to change. And it's, it's that close harmony, that, that, that rub that. Uh, because what you guys hear mirrors what we did in the, in the original beginning. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know. yeah, we played around with so, so, so many songs. I mean, I'm sure like, like, you know, you guys and everybody else, I mean, yeah. I mean, those, you know, there was something about those, you know, what, what New Edition did as a young group, kind yeah. of, we all saw, it because we all around the same ages, you know what I mean? So what New Edition was doing <clears throat> when we was young, just kind of got us all out there to do what we do. So when Boyz II Men came out and Juan said, when Juan, yes, when Juan yes said, this, will it really happen? But the dream just fade away? Yeah. And then and then after that, All For One come out and we Oh, we gotta get on set. <laughs> <laughs> and then finally, finally, you know that that door was answered by the face records and man, yeah, man. Nineties was nineties was just one of those those times, man. It's that it's not around or musically, to me, 90s was like the last great decade of real music. You had R&B on the pop radio, which you can't find these days. You had groups, which you can't find these days on the radio. It was just a time that, uh, what do you guys remember most about the 90s? A lot of love was in the air back then, mm -hmm. you know? Music was inspiring. It made yeah. people that sang in groups particularly want to be the best group possible because there were so many other groups, but everybody was dope in their own right. That's mm -hmm. what I remember. Yeah. yeah, I remember on my block alone, like four or five groups on my city block. <laughs> oh, yeah. Know, just, just in <laughs> Philly, you know, but they were all over the place. And, you know, you had to do something different and unique. And it just seemed like every time when groups were doing certain things we made it a point to do something just totally different and uniquely our own so yeah, it that, paid off yeah there was a lot of um i guess individuality going on back then opposed to now a lot of it's dope but most of it sounds alike mm -hmm. you know everybody had their own yeah. personalities mm -hmm. you know if that's what was dope and how many times can you repeat eight notes Delius? Um, a lot, actually. <laughs> I do it all the time when writing. I'm like, okay. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> you know, I, I, I was telling you guys earlier that um, when I heard it hard to say, I'm sorry, it's one of the songs I was like, damn, I wanted to record that song. What's a song from the 90s that you guys have heard that you were like, man, I wish we had that song? Forever My Lady. Oh. Mm. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a great one. For me personally, yeah. You know, in those days, I I, I wish we would have done David and Goliath take six. That mm -hmm. that would have been my ultimate. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not R and B, but you know, take six is is everything. It was every, they were everything to us back then. Yeah. Was, yeah, I I love Dave take six as well. You go ahead. You were gonna say something? Huh? I said it was practicing with take six that got us to where we were as far as being able to hear harmonies and everything like that. Fine tuned us. It fine tuned us. Man, if I, if I, um, arrangement. I think for me, it would have been uh, Mama. Oh, yeah. Mama. Mama by Boys and Men. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's a pretty serious. That was song. supposed to be our song. And you know anyway. what? Mama was, actually, <laughs> what? Mama was actually in the lineup for the Grammy. There was, there was, there was last night, I mean, there was a hard to say, I'm sorry, as yet. There was Mama, Boys to Men. There was Black Street, No Diggity. There was, uh, there was Take Six in the category too, with one of their songs that was more up to date <clears throat> at the time, not from, you know, their past stuff, but yeah. So, I mean, we were all in the category. You know, yeah, Mama, Mama was definitely one of those songs. That's an honor in itself. <laughs> That's that, absolutely. Absolutely. Mom was one of those songs that I still cry at when I hear it. My mom is, you know, gone now. So I really cry at it. But even before that, just yeah. Yeah. dang, they, 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 they've got a winner with that one. That that song will never go old. There's have a lot of songs that never go old. But as far as touching individual people who are going to go through this at some point in their life, they yeah. nail right on the head with that one. Yeah. Um, Okay, so 2020, what we, can we expect from uh, from as yet? New record, new tours, what's going on? 
Well, right now, with everything being quarantined, all we can really do right now is finish what we started as far as the album. Mm -hmm. you know, right now, we have the single out there that everything got put on hold for, which is Kleptomaniac. But um, we went in the studio. We did two songs with our good friend, Neo. We reconnected with Babyface's people, Tony Dixon. I'm sure you know Tony Dixon. Yeah. And um, we're hopefully going to go back in with him soon and do some more work with him. And uh, Chris <laughs> Henderson did Blame It on the Alcohol and Happily yep. for Kate. He sent yep. us a couple of bangers, and we're finishing them up tonight. <laughs> yeah, and and you know we got a we got our app coming out in about two to three weeks, so make sure you pick up the As Yet app on any store. Now, what what what, what can we find on the app? Just about uh, tours and things you'll be doing, and new records, and materials. What's everything, all on the app? Everything. Like everything. when we start doing our shows, if we're mm -hmm. doing a quarantine show, if we're on the road, if we're doing a podcast, if we're doing a podcast where we're cooking and singing mm -hmm. as a family around Thanksgiving and Christmas, mm -hmm. if we're doing a giveaway, raise money, a raffle, anything, it's going to be right there. Okay, that's actually smart. Give a little push notifications whenever you're in your town or something. Absolutely. Like that. All yeah. the platforms, Facebook, Instagram, right. Twitter, everywhere. When we put it out, it'll be everywhere. Actually, very, very smart. Very smart. Who who do you guys, when you guys, when this all is all over and we get back to touring and all that, who do you guys want to uh, go on the road with? Is there somebody that you always looked at? Oh, what? <laughs> Absolutely. Bring it. <laughs> we, we, we can't be the top of your list, right? <laughs> Right, right. I mean, a couple people. Offer one. Possibly I'm thinking people. Janet Jackson. Uh, yeah. something. You're like offer one. Yeah. Hopefully we can do some things with Neo and with reconnecting with the Babyface Circle. Hopefully we can get with them and do some stuff as well because yeah. that relationship is still good yeah. over there. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah. You got. You guys are obviously still respected because here you are back into the studio and you're back with big name producers. You've never done a record. Without having David, Babyface, Neo, these big producers working on your material. That's amazing, yeah, guys. Exactly. Are you writing for yourselves or oh absolutely? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What is it? What is it that you guys like to write about musically? Do you tell do you tell personal stories? Do you what what, what do you draw your inspiration from? I thought for me, it's it, you know, personally, for me, it's if I'm doing a song that somebody else produced the track to, you know, I, I write about the way the track makes me feel mm -hmm. or the way that I wrote or the way I produce a track or, or something like that. Or could, I, you know, it could be a, 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 a well, a well-rounded uh, topics situation. Yeah. The good music mm -hmm. will speak to you and it'll, it'll basically bring out of you the lyrics and the concept of what that music needs to say. Love Absolutely. Yeah. What was that? I said, love is in there. Somewhere. Love always works. There's only a few ways to say I love you, but we seem to be able to find those in every song for the last, you know, million millions of years. Right. Never go wrong with that. So definitely, it's just definitely time to put some paint where it ain't right now, as far as what people have been hearing for a while. Time to really put some some of that real back out there. Ain't that the truth? It, it feels like on the radio today guys are afraid to say I love you in a song. There's no romantic groups or no romantic R&B people who are not afraid to say I love yeah. you in a song. You got to nowadays, if you want to set the mood for your woman, you got to go pick one of the old records to play it. Right. <laughs> yeah. Why, why do you think the music industry is gone to the way it's gone? I don't mean to diss nobody. I hope this don't cut nobody. But I think a lot of the people that run the labels that make the decisions, they just good with numbers. They're not good with music and what's good for the people and what people love. Mm -hmm. Concept, if people yeah. love it, they buy it. It's mm -hmm. going to be about just about what the last person's numbers were. We need you to do something like that. Yeah, It just changes exactly. everybody's narrative as far as the, the um, I guess, the individuality, that word again. It changes everybody to wanting to be the same super heated with the same eight notes opposed mm -hmm. to being digging deep and doing something that's innovative. Yeah. I used to always hate when someone would say, we want you guys to do something like this record right here. And I'm like, well, if you're following behind somebody, you're already late to the party because by the time this comes out, somebody creative will have something different. You know, and then when they're afraid to take chances on something may you may be experimenting with, it's like, I don't know if I've ever heard anything like that before. But then it becomes a hit and everybody's like, I want something like that. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. It's like I can't I can't take it.
Well, and don't get me wrong. Some of the stuff that's out there is amazing. But the dope thing about, like, I love these dudes even before joining the group. The dope thing about as yet they can sing anything. Yeah. You know, now we can sing anything. So if you give us a track like that, we put what we do to that opposed to trying to sound like those people. Just give us that track and what, let us put as yet on top of that. Right. And that that bring brings some beautiful gumbo to the table. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Who are you guys listening to today? Today's music. Who inspires you today on the radio? Mm. I would say her. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, like her. You got Post Malone, you know. Mm -hmm. I like Janae Aiko. I like her. Mm hmm. Um, listen to some Halsey, you know. I also like uh, the boy, what's his name? Sam Smith. He's dope. Sam. Of course, Beyonce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. You know? Now there's a tour when I say we want a tour with Beyonce. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, man. man. Yeah. Can I get one of your opening spots on that tour, Beyonce? I'll go on at five o'clock when your concert starts at eight. Just put me in the building. Right, <laughs> right. Just so you can tell everybody, I opened up for Beyonce. So I opened up for Beyonce. I did that tour. She wasn't even town yet, but I was there. Nobody saw it, but I was there. Uh -huh. Some people call it a sound check. But I was on the same stage. Right, right, <laughs> right. Well, fellas, it's been a uh, great speaking with you. Anything you want to tell your fans before uh, we get out of here? Yeah, go follow us at the real dot as yet on Instagram, and then on Facebook, Facebook it's as yet, as yet. Search, search as yet, yeah. On Facebook, and don't forget to pick up that app coming to an app store near you. A Z space. Y-E-T. Yes, it's available on Android now, but in the next three, four weeks, it'll be on Apple, on iOS. It'll be everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, flashback tonight. This is As Yet. Make sure you pick up their app. Make sure you go to their website, follow them, and uh, see them on tour when they're on tour. Um, thank you, guys. Thanks for joining us, all right? Thanks, thank you. Thank you. Salute, brother. All right. Good night.